a spirit horse. There's nothing quite like it. It's a place where you can come and catch a glimpse, a vision of what an ancient, wild, magically alive, exuberant and extravagant, ecstatic village looks like. That also is very real and emotionally authentic. It's a place to experiment with being together, remaking culture, renewing culture, finding a way to be with the earth, be with our kids, be with our old people, be with each other, have our love affairs, find God, mystery in the universe together. From horizon to horizon, in this most lovely valley, we somehow managed to raise 450,000 pounds to buy it, and just to let the whole 200 acres grow wild, so we can see what happens when nature's allowed to do whatever it wants, when it just return the land to her. And so many people lovingly gave towards that. It's possible that many people could do this in many parts of the country. So here we are at the Women's Lodge. We can have a little look inside. There's no women inside at the moment, but I think they wouldn't mind. love this structure. Women love it. Everybody loves it. We made it with grass and reeds. Come and have a look inside, but we need help to put a really good roof on it that will last. This size, this shape, we've used for ritual over and over and over, over these nearly three decades. This works. This is the right size. This is the right feel. The magic comes. You can hear the water in the background there while you're sitting by the fire. Fire and water, the sound and the crackle of both. Like all the other buildings here, this was made entirely by loving hands. Enthusiastic people had a whole day with about 20 women bringing gravel from the river to make the floor. I've worked as a carpenter my whole life. I had to forget everything about how something was going to look. Static building is such a delightful approach. Reaching out, reaching for the sky, reaching for beauty, for some kind of glorious expression of creativity. It was hard at first to allow the extension of a timber to be what would be six inches, two foot. How's that for an exercise? Not enough, it's gotta be eight foot. What, that's mad? Yes, and that's beautiful. And that's what I love. This scraping the sky here is the men's lodge, the oldest structure on site. It started off as our original medicine lodge, but after a while it became the men's sacred house, if you like. This one doesn't need too much doing to it, just maintaining and keeping going. We follow nature, so we're also building a sort of spirit of something bigger than ourselves as well. So there's a feeling of support, feeling at the valley that this place itself actually wants us to succeed in our building. And so whenever I feel like I'm building here, I always feel like there's another unseen pair of hands holding a piece of wood or just keeping something straight. So this is our spiral lodge, we call it, the general meeting place. You can get warm in here and have massage, have cuddles and have cozy time. And in a valley like this, it's important to have structures like this. As a matter of fact, this structure with its views out over the mountains and the waters, it's ideal. It's the roundhouse developed over 27 years down in this valley. And these structures, they capture magic. They're warm to be in, it's great to sit in a circle in, it's great to do anything in. So we're building another one. This one is pretty much complete and we're really pleased with it, really proud of it. We're using it all the time, but it needs a proper roof. So it's a few thousand to put the roof on it so that it will sit beautifully in the landscape. We've temporarily roofed it. I've spent the last 20 years working as a conservation contractor. To that end, the project with their trees and the mountains here, the rewilding, it's a really good thing to get involved with. It's what we need to do. Working in Roundwood, uh, working with whole trees, no plans, it's all come from the heart. So this is our big roundhouse. In honour of the whole ancestral lineage, if you like, or the Celtic lineage of roundhouses, let's have a roundhouse and big enough for the whole tribe. Some of the two or three hundred people can sit in. And we build it here in this beautiful location, with the waterfall behind, wild apple trees and the wild oak forest behind. We need another few months work on it and we need a roof, folks. Over the years, we've done everything on a shoestring budget. Nobody gets paid. It's not a profit-making thing. It's always done by people volunteering their carpentry skills or just their pumping and lumping skills. On summer evenings, this place is filled with drums, with men and women dancing, carousing, laughing. We piece together a new culture made out of stories, made out of ritual, made out of being together in an ecstatic way, where the singing and the dancing is offered to the wild to bring us back home again. We need this to house something. What it will house is not totally revealed to you. You've seen some things, but there's more to come. There's younger people coming. There's a new tribe coming. There's a new generation of people looking for the ancient village, looking for the ancient home, looking for a natural way to live that are even better informed and more deeply rebellious at the end of the day than my generation was. It's not revealed to me exactly what will happen, but something needs to happen, and it is at home. If you'd like to get involved, our welcome is there. 
the building here, I mean, it's round houses and yurts, but they're done slightly differently. It's like a real tribal feel to them, but using modern technology and modern ways of building. It's wood and canvas, and it's got a feel of something that's going up permanent, something that I know is going to be here, even if I don't come again. This is the rebuild of a structure. We used to have a huge dome here. The whole structure will be clad in the larch that we saw just now in the pile down there. The men were stacking it so that it looks like a beautiful thin skin of larch laid on exactly as it was in the tree. We brought three lorry loads of trees, larch, purposely grown, local people helping us to make things from local materials, and all around these hillsides, trees, 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 trees growing. So whatever we use, even if we used 100 trees, even if we used 200 trees, and we did, there's still 20,000 or 220,000. There's trees growing everywhere. It starts with the forest, it starts with the ancient, it starts with nature, and then the humans take the little bit that they need. And whatever we take from those trees has to be made into something beautiful. It's done for love of the timber, for love of the trees, for love of making beautiful homes. So whatever we make out of it, it's got to be as honored like that. But there is no life without death, but it can be done beautifully. Inside we're still working. Most of the work done in the month of May, three weeks. A dozen or so people all working happily together all day, every day. 11 o'clock in the morning till 9 o'clock at night. That's our working hour, seven days a week. That's how we normally build. With everybody seeing progress, everybody seeing a project actually happen in front of their eyes and something begun and then taken to completion. Local trees pulled out of the forest by horse. If you have to cut down a tree, this is what you can make out of it. So we still need to make the insulated floor. If you live in a wet climate like ours, but you want to live really well, you have to have a sauna. You have to have a couple of really warm spaces. The rest of the time you can live in the open, you can live in the wind and the rain, you can enjoy all of it, you can live in teepees, but every now and again you need somewhere you can really get warm. Then you can live in style and grace and enjoy any kind of weather. But not to be insulated away from the elements, but somehow for them to be so close and that you can be comfortable. It's not about being uncomfortable, it's becoming supremely comfortable with nature. Comfortable inside these lodges that still feel like nature. They are housed in a beautiful way. This is a beautiful village experiment in making something that everybody wants to be involved in making and then wants to sit down in happily. When we walk into these lodges, even a year, two, three years later, it's like, we made something beautiful. That's the feeling you want. You want to have that feeling in your belly. Collectively, communally, everybody feels happy, proud, included, kind of ecstatic about what we're doing together. It's quite boring to do one of these on your own. It's never boring when you've got 10 or 20 people, some of them are cooking, some making the tea, and some doing the work, some doing the carrying, some doing the skill work. When everybody's working together, it's like, this is it. We've arrived. This is natural. This is how human beings are. It's how we like to be. This is home. It's a great experiment. And it keeps the door open on the possibility of such things existing. And many people come here with a kind of, wow, I didn't know that this was possible. It's important that people see what's possible. Even get a glimpse of it. We begin to rediscover what the ancient village felt like and smelt like. So that's what we're kind of offering to the world. Oh